uh, here on our special JBM this week. It's Mike Olshin here with the Group 4 South Jersey defending uh, champions, our Cherokee crew. We've got Brandon Prince. we got Jason Schooley. we got Evan Brown, really kind of the three uh, returning senior captains, I guess, uh, for the most part. you got a couple others, obviously, that had a huge role last year, too. But uh, but welcome, guys, and uh, thanks for stopping on here in the off season. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Never never off season though, right? We're always uh, we're always working to get better. Um, you guys are going to have a pretty big target on your shoulders now for your senior year, um, because as we know, South Jersey Group Four, you got your team that wins, and you got about fifteen other teams that think they were just as good and could have won and are going to come back next year. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start with you, Brandon. How are we handling uh, knowing that you guys are going to be the hunted this year coming up? I think we're definitely, definitely going to play with it on our shoulders. We're going to take it. We're going to play with that swagger, come with the energy again, but we're not taking anyone for granted. Still, we still know there's so much competition in South Jersey now. So we really just got to put everything together again, work good as a team. And I know we have the capability and I know we will come through. Yeah, but I like that we, you know, <laughs> kind of locking it down in the outfield with you. We got the uh, the infield taken care of here today with Evan. So, uh, you know, you've got a big target too, right? Naval Academy D1 commit, big, uh, big name, big season, hit 400 last year as a junior. Um, what do we, uh, how do we fight that going into every game, knowing that everybody's coming for you? Personally, I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, just knowing that every team in South Jersey is looking to beat you. I mean, just it just adds the extra motivation to work hard in practice and go out there and compete during the games. It, it just makes high school baseball that much more fun because, you know, everybody's – they're coming out to, and they're playing their best against you and they, they really want to be because they know you're the returning champs. And just like the Phillies said, just like the Phillies said, you got to beat the champs to be the champs. So we want everybody to take their best shot at us. So I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Jason, obviously a leader behind the plate for a few years now. I remember our Sandlot in 2020 in the summer when we had uh, Anthony and Nick up playing with us. And, and they both kept saying that the, the, the best one coming through was, was the one still coming through. And now you're, uh, you're the old senior. Uh, like I said, like, like uh, Evan and uh, Brennan said, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, last year being the sixth seed in the playoffs and uh, losing a couple of games to some of the higher seeds in the regular season, playing as that underdog team last year uh, was obviously fun. And uh, now we have a completely different role. Um, but I think our uh, team will keep the same, uh, like we'll, we'll keep the same energy going in as the underdog, not taking anyone for granted. And um, like you said, the pitching staff, we got a lot of returning guys. I'm really looking forward to it. Something about the six seed uh, doing well and winning championships, right? That's where we're, we're all we're all well. I don't know. Is Evan a Phillies fan? Because he's not. No, I, I'm a Phillies fan. I'm a Phillies fan. All right, all right. So we're we're all four for four on that then. And this, uh, you know, hopefully this weekend coming up, the the Phillies will be back in town. And uh, any of you get to any of the uh, the playoff games yet, or planning on it, or anything? I was at I was at the game Friday night, the Reese Hoskins game. Oh my God! The, it, was, the back it was the coolest thing I've ever been to because when they were back in back in eleven last time they were in the playoffs, I was like six years old, so I never got to experience. So, luckily, my dad gave me a present for committing this week. He said we're gonna go to the Phillies game, and I got to see all that. And it was probably the coolest thing, coolest sports game that I've ever seen. So, don't you guys wish you had delayed your commitment the right before the playoffs? Like, like Brandon, Brandon knew what was going on, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, you, you answered my question was, you know, how was it the most incredible thing you've ever seen live? You know, just the, um, but you brought up another thing, obviously your commitment first, we'll start with you since you brought it up and we're most recent. Um, Scranton, right? One of our, uh, the landmark conference, one of the top, uh, top dogs, I guess the champs two years ago. Yeah, back in the- Top seed, top seed got bumped off this past year, but, but still a great program. Tell us about how your recruiting went and uh, what got you hooked on, on Scranton ultimately. So it, like I was talking to a bunch of other schools and then I was looking, I was just looking around like all the colleges, what teams, what schools, and 
screen brought my eyes. I looked into the school, saw everything I liked. The program looked amazing. Facilities were great. So I reached out to the coach and finally he got back to me right away. And they're actually, he's, he's kind of close with Mike Lucarelli. So that, had that connection. So we all talked about that and I ended up going up there, I want to say two weekends ago to see it, see the coach and pretty much just took off from there. I love the school, visited, toured it. It was all great. And the baseball complex is awesome now. Yeah, they got new fields about five years ago. They redid yeah. the whole the whole sports complex. They had new turf, softball, and like soccer, lacrosse field, new locker rooms, and it all looked so nice, and I fell in love with it when I went out there. Yeah, for sure. Now, now Jason, you were second most recent, and – you know, kind of following the family tradition now, I suppose, right? You know, uh, we go back to, to Nick being a uh, all, you know, everything all in Jack, um, college World Series participant his senior year, which is really neat for, it's a heck of a way to go out. Um, Anthony getting there last year, hasn't made it to the World Series yet in, in one year, but they were awful close. They, uh, you know, I had bumped into the top seed before the, the round before, but maybe he's just waiting for you now to get to Rowan. And uh, we've done one schoolie in the in the at the Field of Dreams. Now we're going for a double, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely the goal. Um, Rowan is an is a awesome place to be. I'm uh, really happy with my decision, and uh, like you said, they that is a winning program, and I'm really looking forward to bringing my talents there. And uh, I'm just I'm really looking forward to getting after it. And, and, you know, some guys don't know what the school's all about when they get in, you know, when, they're, when they go or they commit or whatever. I got to imagine that you knew but pretty much better than most, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can say my recruitment process with them was a lot different than other schools. Um, the Coach Dixon, um, who I've been watching coach baseball for five years now, um, I, like, I've been following him for a very long time. I know exactly his coaching style. I know his practice schedules. I know – everything and the ins and out in that program and um so basically the the tour was him just showing me the um the school as a uh, as a student as compared to a visitor um for the games and uh I fell in love with the school as well uh and yeah so you, I'm definitely um definitely I'm definitely not gonna be a new face to the program that's for sure <laughs> and Evan you were uh, the first of the guys here to to commit right to to the Naval Academy Tell us, you know, obviously you're going to an academy school, you know, how did that get into your thinking and you know, kind of explain for everybody the, the process, the, you know, the, the different process um, of, of going to a military academy school. Yeah, absolutely. So my process goes really, really far back. It was um, the summer before my junior year. So I was, I was just getting started looking at schools. Um, I, had, I had a good sophomore year, but I got hurt. I was just coming back. So I was playing a lot of showcases, a lot of, a lot of tournaments, just talking to schools, trying to, trying to figure out which route I wanted to go. But funny thing is the academies were in the back of my mind. Um, <clears throat> they were introduced to me, but I never, I never, I don't have a military family. So I wasn't really that interested in at first. But as I talked to the coach, um, I became more and more aware of what it has to offer. and all the benefits from it. So um, relationship kept growing and growing. Then I visited <clears throat> the week, the weekend of September 11th um, versus Air Force, football versus Air Force. And the game was amazing. And the whole experience was amazing. I got to stay with one of the players. It was awesome. There's so much history on campus there. It's just, I got to see everything. I mean, it's, you know, school only has 4,000 students about, but it was still, it was still amazing. Like, Everybody, that's that's what's so great about such a small school like that. Everybody's so close. It's it's literally a brotherhood. It's, they it's they're not sugarcoating that. It's literally a brotherhood, and that's what I loved about it. You go to the Army Navy game this past year after I uh, did. Yeah, I did. I took the two hour drive to MetLife. I did go. It was awesome. It's a different meaning now, right? Yeah, yeah. Brandon, what was it like, you know, the feeling among the team, right? This was, you know, you, you win the first game and then you just get rolling, I guess. I want to say, like, the feeling all started back in the conference kind of championship game against Shawnee when Cheeseman hit that walk-off home run. 
that like gave us a vibe around the whole locker room. It was like, we we're in this, we could do this. And we never looked back from there. I feel like we never had any doubt in our minds going through that whole playoff run that we were going to lose to any team, given any competition, any pitcher. We all had confidence in each other to get it done. Uh, we were, it wasn't even, it was, it's hard to explain. Like there's just a feeling in the locker room during the time. Like everyone was just clicking with each other. We were getting on each other. We were fixing mistakes. It was just a great place to be around. Evan, now that we've had four months or so to, to look back on it, what does it mean to be, you know, South Jersey group four champ? It was one of the greatest feelings of my life. I mean, it's just because the team aspect of it, it was, it was a team effort the whole season. It wasn't just one guy. It was everybody pushing each other during practice, you know, getting our reps in, um, like Brennan said, getting on each other, fixing mistakes. Um, and that's what, that's what really builds that chemistry between teammates. Um, just, just working together. Um, it was a special thing. Um, we figured it out towards the end of the year. And I think that's what great teams do. They, they play their best when the, the lights are the brightest. And I think we did just that. And it, it was awesome. It's the greatest feeling of my life. Jason, we, we know you're a take charge guy behind the plate. Um, and we mean that in the, in the best possible way. So the question, I guess, for you is, right, so we get to the finals. Jeremy pitches a great game to, to beat Shawnee in the semifinals. And you got your next two guys, really, you know, Brett Gable, who we had on a couple weeks ago, and Grayson Bravo are young guys. Um, how do you help get them through? Because I know Brett talked about being so nervous he was like uh, – throwing up a little bit before the uh, before the game how do you help you know they're obviously great pitchers but how do you help them deal with like you know being 10th graders going for a, a sectional title yeah I mean you say yourself it's all about letting them know that they're there for a reason um, I remember texting Brett all day and just let him know that like just pitch the same way you're always going to and I remember when um we were getting on the bus uh, after beating Shawnee and uh, I was the last one on the bus um, me and coach P and uh, I remember him looking at me right before we got on the bus and he was like, I'm going to give the ball to the kid. And um, I immediately looked at him and knew that it was the right decision. And uh, from that point on, it was just me and Brett preparing for the moment. Um, luckily I knew a, a couple of the hitters on Kingsway. So it helped me prepare a little bit better. Um, and he was lights out. He, the composure he had in that game was unbelievable. And uh he, it goes back to the Millville game and the playoff game uh, that he pitched uh, previously. He uh, just – his composure, he gave up a home run the first inning to uh, Wayne Hill. And that from that, like – and then he went five innings, gave up one more run, and just pitched with the utmost confidence. And I could really tell from then. Obviously, he pitched really well the, rest, like, the whole season. But um, from that point on, I knew that there was nothing that he could rattle him, uh, and he was going to be locked in no matter what. So, like you said, it's just – it's – making sure that he knew that he was the right guy for that moment and just making sure everyone's locked in. He trusted me with the pitch calling. And um, I knew that no matter what I put down there, he was going to hit the spot. So it definitely showed. And I'm, I'm super proud of the kid. Yeah. Cause it's not like he was pitching with the big lead in any of these games. You no, know, there was, not. there was no margin for error. Yeah. Um, I, can add on that. I can add on that but from a fielder's perspective, getting behind yeah. him. You no, know, it's not really usual for a freshman to come in here and just earn everyone's trust right away. You know, it's the young guy. You guys think he's going to be nervous and stumble, but I could speak for all of us that there's nobody, nobody we trusted more than him in that game. Like we knew, we knew he was going to keep us in there. We knew he was going to do his job. And it's just, it's so fun being able to get behind a freshman, even though he didn't play like it, but getting behind him, it was great to feel. Yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, and, and, you know, so you're playing Kingsway. Finally, you break the tie, right? Patrick gets one down the line. You get two runs, and you're up to nothing. And what was the feeling like, Brandon, with everybody? It was great. We had the we had a fun celebration after the hit, but we knew right after that the game's not over because just how baseball is like. Anything could happen. They could come back, score four more the next ten, and we had to keep ourselves locked in. I remember everyone going out. Everyone was, like, celebrating, going crazy, but we're over there trying to, like, calm everyone down. Like, game's not over. We still have a job to be finished. And 
I think that was very important that we didn't get too high after that, but we kept going and we just finished our game that we didn't try and do too much. We just finished our game, same game we've been playing the whole year. Yeah, yeah. having somebody like Brett, who's, you know, Grayson, not like, uh, not like Jeremy throwing 92, 93 and you yeah. get a bunch of strikeouts and the ball might not be put in play for a while, but you know, the guys who, get weak contact or they they're fun to play in the infield behind I'm sure absolutely I think what makes him a specialist and Jake and voucher me is, is the kid's movement on the ball it, it's insane his curveball I think it's one of the greatest left-handed curveballs I've ever seen in my life it's it's his fastball has so much movement and tail that that it, for a right-handed hitter or even a left-handed hitter rides up on your hands it, it's literally so hard to hit I've never faced him, but I hope I get to face him during preseason this year just so I can see for myself. But he – I've even said it from the from tryouts when I saw him pitch. He he was going to be special. He he doesn't have to throw 90-95. He, he, can, he can dot up corners with, with the movement of his pitches, change up his curveball. You know, that he, the kid just pitches, and it's really special. And, yeah, the ground balls are awesome. Um, when Cheese pitches, he's striking kids out left and right. So – you know, you get you get kind of heavy on your feet out there in the field, but Brad, you always got to be on your toes because kids are going to roll over no matter what. Yep, yep. Jane, take us through the last, you know, the last couple batters. The what's going through your head? Yeah, it was so, so um, Yeah, it was. Yeah, one minute ago, I'll go. We're it's probably like the fifth or sixth, and I'm like the anticipation anticipation is starting to build up. Like you're starting to get a little anxious because you're getting towards the end of the game. It's getting a little, it's getting a little antsy. So. When we get to that seventh thing, I'm I'm counting out to my head. I'm like one out, two out. Okay, okay, this could actually happen. Three outs. So I don't know. I was like, I was, I wouldn't say like I was nervous, but I was just so I was so excited to the point where like my body was like kind of shaking a little bit because I was so excited. Um. So when that final out came, it was, it was awesome. Like, I don't know. Like, so when everybody threw their gloves up and dog piled. I don't know that's like, that's like the first high school championship I've been a part of as a team. So, you know, my sophomore year, we, we, we didn't really make it as far. So it was awesome. And we all, we've all been playing with each other for a while. So it's, we're not like the private school teams where, you know, they're just a bunch of group of kids coming to play together. We've been playing with each other since we were seven or eight years old. So we're literally like brothers and it was just awesome because we knew we did it as a team and as, as a group. Yeah, I'll back off. I'll uh, carry on to that. The, um, as a catcher, uh, I mean, I'm trying my best to stay locked in. But uh, as soon as um, as soon as Grayson took the mound, um, and that I think he pitched the sixth and the seventh. Um, when he took the mound in whatever inning he did, um, you could see the look in his eyes. He knew that he was he was going to get the job done. Um, and like I, remember, I think the last inning he went 3-0 on the first batter, um, and I was starting to shake a little bit. But only yeah. having a one run lead, and then uh, obviously just stick with the fastball, stick on what's, what, what's, what was working and uh, strike, strike one, strike two. And then uh, I think we got a chaser. I don't remember exactly what happened, but as soon as that strike got happened and we, we, we he was started off three Oh, came all the way back and struck the last kid out. I, I knew it was inevitable, but, um, and then when that last ball got hit on the ground of a tree, I, I go running the back up first and seeing cheese pick it from my perspective was awesome. And, I immediately threw my helmet up in the air and I gave cheese a big hug. And then we ran to the center and it was, it's truly the one of the best feelings I'll ever feel in my life. And like Evan said, it's, it's kids I've been playing with since I was seven years old. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been to Brandon's house to hang out. Like it's, it's, it's unbelievable that we were able to do something like that. And I, I can't wait to get after it again this year. Yeah. Going on to when he said like seven years old, like there's about six, five, six of us on that team that played since we were on the same like eight year old town team who actually we won a champion, like a regional championship when we were eight years old. And we kind of experienced, it's obviously not the same moment, not as big, but it's just crazy how everything just came back together. And it, it, there's no one else on this planet who I'd rather win with than these guys. It's just different. And then seeing everything from like center field perspective, you got you can see the whole game you see every position everywhere it's like the perfect view and I was like I was waiting for the ball to come to me because I, I everybody wants that last out but yeah. seeing the ball seeing the ball go to Dom yeah he had a little it was a little rough early in the game but I had no doubt in my mind that he wasn't making that play I knew he had that I knew everything was going to go up and 
seeing that final throw from the from the center field perspective was amazing. All three of us outfielders, we've been celebrating this whole year. Me, Patrick, and Cruz, we do, we have our like our little outfield celebration. We usually do like slam dunks. We all come to center and celebrate. So doing that for the championship game, there's nothing. There's nothing better. We've been waiting for that the whole year doing it, and we finally got to do it. And running in, seeing all the fans celebrating for us, something you'll never forget. Definitely, hey, you're, you're lucky for that for that fan perspective. I never got to see that. So, yeah. yeah, and there was a huge turnout, if I remember too. You guys Absolutely. crushed it crushed it for the for the championship right yeah that was a that was a really funny story too because uh that was the day of kingsway's prom so um they they made the game at like noon and um our our administrator administrators uh like we're saying like you can't leave school early to go to the baseball game so we all those kids that were there skipped school that day completely just to come to our game so it really showed showed it showed the school as a whole and it it, it was awesome to see that many guys coming up and like we saw obviously all the parents. All we we saw um, like coaches from town teams from ages eight to twelve coming up with all of their kids in their jerseys and their orange chief jerseys. It was it felt like being a pro. It was it was unbelievable. Because you know there was kids that that were the age that when you guys started playing together that were watching that and and now they got something to shoot for. Absolutely. Yep. So so Brandon gave us a little bit about the outfield routine little celebration routine. Evan, any uh, interesting or unusual rituals, anything that was uh, going on in the infield? Yeah, so this was something me and Dom started doing towards the end of the year. Um, after every game, we get the, when we get the last out, we go like through the legs, like we're dunking and, and then we jump up and like, uh, it's hard to explain, but like through the legs and then like you go like that, like past each other. I have, I have a few pictures of it, it's really cool. But um, so we saw Ole Miss do it. And we were like, we have to do this. This is so cool. And me and him are really, really close. So it was, it was just really awesome that we had that thing that we do because it really makes winning that much better because we get to do it. Just like Brandon used to do it in the outfield with his buddies. So yeah, when we 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 got to semi do it tour um, at the South Jersey game, but I was so excited I totally forgot to do it. That, so we just ended up bumping shoulders, but it was still <laughs> awesome. I, I have a picture of it. It's it's my background for my computer and. Um, yeah, it, it was so awesome. I mean, getting a dog pile, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, we, we got a picture that we'll show of that. And uh, we knew that you were that good of an athlete, but didn't know that Dom could jump that. Oh, d- he he can dunk. He can dunk. He, he, wow. He's a big athlete, yeah. Because he's barely six foot, right? He's yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. If, if, he's I mean, like, he's probably like 5'10", maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 5'10", he's probably, he's probably going to get mad at me for that, but I don't know. <laughs> Jay, staff of great pitchers, you know, uh, what, like I said, everybody, everybody thinks of, of Jeremy right away, but, but certainly, you know, Blake and, and, and Shane and, and obviously Grayson and, and, you know, certainly, uh, you know, Brett with, with what he did. And, and, and I know I'm missing a couple. Um, any, who was the most, I don't want to say unique, but who had the, the, the most unique kind of like pregame routine out of all of them? Um, I'm definitely gonna go with Sax. Um, yeah, he's he's always an odd cat, right? It's always a lefty. He's an odd cat. Um, there's no one really quite like him. Uh, he's been one of my best friends for the past couple of years now, and uh, seeing him seeing him on a pitching game day and when he's not pitching are completely different things. Um, but his pitch routine is very different. He doesn't really he doesn't talk to to many people besides me. But he he's he's an unbelievable guy. Um. And I, I love the kids so much. And he, I know he didn't get the uh, production that he was looking for towards the end of the year. Um, but he, he was the first kid off the bench when we came in the dugout. He was always talking to us, always helping out the pitchers, almost like another coach in there. And he was, uh, he was a great guy to have in the dugout, even though he wasn't pitching as much as he wants to. And when he goes out there, he's still, still the Shane Sachs that we all know and love. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he has to do in, uh, at FDU. I said no in love and, and hate to hit against, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Brandon? Was, oh, I'm sorry. On that, whenever – I remember at all the home games, whenever Gable would pitch, it would be so funny because Gable, a huge long-tossing guy. Jason, not a huge long-tossing guy. So, what he would do, <laughs> he'd bring a cutoff man in between just so he could long-toss. And I, I loved watching that. It was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll, I'll explain a little more on that. So um, our first the first time I ever caught him uh, was a scrimmage against Ocean City. Uh, he got the start against uh, Ocean City, and that game was probably 10 degrees outside. It was freezing. <laughs> and he was wearing just a, his jersey, no arm sleeve, nothing. He just went out there and he started throwing. And I, I'm like, all right, like I've thrown with plenty of pitchers in my career. Um, like a lot of them are like in between, like some of them go to second, some of them go past second. Like they're not too far. And I like looked up after like two throws and he was already like behind second base. And then he's got me throwing pole to pole before games and being a catcher, I don't throw as much as a lot of those other guys, but I was definitely feeling after him. And I think I'll give him credit for getting my arm strength better to second base because I was long tossing him so much, but it got to the point at the end of the year where I'm long tossing with the pitcher every single day for five days a week. And uh, my arm's starting to feel it a little bit towards the end of the year. And I'm, I'm telling guys like Grayson and Brody Minder, some of the younger guys who just finished throwing, maybe they're in relief that day, keeping their arms loose a little bit. And I'm like, yo, go stand at second base. And when Brett throws it to me, I'm going to throw it to you. You throw it back to him. I'm not reaching him from all the way out here. <laughs> Got to shave your bullets. You're an old, older guy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I can't keep up with these young guys anymore. That's right. Brody's <laughs> another one that I've forgotten about and shouldn't have, but you know, guys like that have got to, also feed the excitement for for this year too right having so many guys that that can just shove yeah absolutely i'm i'm really looking forward to handling this staff again this year um we're 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 young again and um that should be a scary sign for for high schools so the like i i know we only graduated we graduated a couple uh, like a bunch of seniors a lot of them or a couple of them were like major uh major roles on our team but this year is the same thing we got four or five six guys that are going to be the the really big roles on the team and, and being such a big school, we're going to have such an opportunity to continuously be good, be really good. But I'm really looking forward to handling these staff, like guys like Grayson who didn't have a opportunity until really late in the year, um, who then proved himself and he's going to be a huge role. Um, obviously Gable, uh, Minder really looking for, really looking forward to seeing what he has to do. Um, Patrick, we'll see if Patrick gets on the mound a bunch this year. I'm looking forward to that too. And, uh, Danny Torres was another one that uh, pitched during a bunch of those tight games with us. Uh, we all knew he was going to be legit when uh, he pitched against uh, East Brunswick. We didn't know anything about East Brunswick, and he came out and threw seven innings and was fighting Coach P to get to not give the not take the ball away from him with one out left in the seventh. So he's a dog too, and we're we're really looking forward to, to these pitchers. I won't let you say winning the championship because that was too that's too obvious. But give me one moment that will stick out otherwise from last year and one thing that you're looking forward to for this year I think I had a lot of good moments during high school but I think my favorite had to be during Carpenter Cup um, when I hit the home run at the Philly Stadium it was that was that was all I that might like it's close to South Jersey but it's not as good as South Jersey because I've been to that that park so many times yeah. to watch games so many home runs and just just playing on the field felt surreal and Jake and Jake and back me up it, it just it was just awesome like running out the center field during warm-ups was like oh my god like yeah. this place is huge and then I was I, it was funny because I thought to myself before the game I was like how does anybody hit one out here like this place <laughs> it seems humongous and then sure enough um I forget what inning I came in but it was just my second at bat and I, I hit one over left field fence and just I think I, that was the fastest I've ever ran around the bases in my life I, I don't know it was just all adrenaline it was awesome um, Brandon, for you, one moment that, you know, again, not the obvious one um, that you'll always remember. Yeah, so I want to say it was the uh, round two of the playoffs against Millville when uh, – so they got at the early lead, obviously, in the first inning. I think it was 2 nothing. Yeah. And we came back, we loaded the bases, and then I was up. And pitcher got two strikes on me, and – I understood my role. I knew my job, what to do, just put a ball in play. So it gives us an opportunity. So I just do my usual. I I think I'm really good with two strikes. I'm not a huge strikeout guy. So just shorten up, get my bear on the ball, let put the ball in play, let something happen. So I just get a curveball breaking and put the barrel out, and I hit a single up the middle, which I think took the lead. It did. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally three two, which ended up being the winning the go ahead run and won the game. Mm -hmm. So that moment was surreal. And on the video on Twitter, you got to see Cheese sliding in at home. 
hitting the bow and arrow after he scored right to the camera, and it was just surreal. <laughs> Everyone was there, and it was great. Jay, for you, what's one that's going to stand out? Um, mine might not be so positive, but uh, so I remember we were playing Washington Township, and uh, we had an explosion offensively that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we I think we put up like eight or nine runs in the first inning, and um, I think Patrick hit like a grand slam and also had like an RBI double in the same inning. But uh, we – we that that game we were I think I want to say it was the second second inning maybe even the first inning and uh, Sachs was pitching and like I said we were up eight nothing we were at their place and uh, obviously eight, eight nothing game people play a little differently with a, such a huge cushion and um, I think I missed like two blocks in a row or maybe like I, two got away from me I don't even think there was anybody on base and then uh, like I missed maybe like one or two more and they scored like I think they scored two runs off of it so now we're up eight or nine two and. Uh, I called timeout. Like I just walked up. I was trying to calm everyone down because everyone was starting to get a little nippy at each other. And um, I like was calling and I was like, all right, everyone take a deep breath. Like, let's just reset. Sachs was was spiking a few. And I was like, all right, let's just everyone reset. Call the whole team in. And Patrizzi came in from shortstop and punched me right across the chest and was like, school, you got to get your head out of your ass and you got to uh, you got to play better. This is unbelievable. And I'm like, I'm like, Dom, relax. We're up eight, two. And from that, that was really when Dom showed his his leadership that year, and he it didn't matter what the score was. So, but that really stuck out to me. It was it was hilarious. And then I got back to the day, we're still fighting with each other, and we ended up winning like fourteen to two, and and it was it was hilarious. But I I thought it was so funny. See, that's the video I want to have. It was it was as someone in the infield, it was hysterical. It was hysterical. It was so funny. And Evan, that's definitely not the first. That was definitely not the only time it happened, was it? No, no. It was. It was. It was a continuous thing. It was always Dom too. It was always Dom. Dom always hitting Jason or just hitting someone else. Oh, it, it was back and forth. Don't worry. I, I gave. I was uh, letting letting right. hear it. All right, we're making sure. Um, who looks the best in the orange? Well, first of all, orange jacket. Do we know how that started? Um, and, and who, who looks the best in it? This is an obvious answer. Who looks the best in it? (laughs) Not even, not even a question. Not even a question. (laughs) So I'll, I'll explain how we got it. So every year we have like a new prop last year. Well, two years ago, it was the big game chain. So you do something good. You contribute to the game. You get the chain this year. We had the jacket. So it's just, it's, motivation almost to keep playing keep locked in keep us going which is a great thing coach Dolores started it and he's rolled with it over the years and for my pick for best looking in it it's got to be the one and only Brett Cable first team all handsome absolutely absolutely uh yeah so the jacket the jacket's awesome because uh I'm sure you've seen the Blue Jays did it this year they had the home run jacket so that, that was obviously an idea we had in the head. And then um, when Dolores introduced the uh, jacket to us, it was around the time of the Masters and how the Masters have the jacket. Uh, Dolores yeah. wanted to incorporate the jacket as the like the master of the game. And to yes, get, obviously, obviously it's Brett Gable. To get an orange one, too. I mean, that's that's yeah. that much better. It just it was great. It was awesome. Yeah. We're definitely look. We're definitely looking to get a home run, home run prop this year, uh, just because we hit so many last year. So we're expecting to hit, hit the same amount this year. So we're we're hoping to get like a hat or something. Yeah, but I I, I hope that I mean I know you you've changed up every year, but I kind of feel like the jacket's got to stay in some some regard, right? The jacket will stay. I mean, at least definitely. three more years till Brett's graduated, and then it can probably move on, right? Because no the jacket will definitely can wear it as, as good as Brett did. Feels right? like whenever he pitches, he always gets it. <laughs> he might as well just wear it all the time. I was going to say he can start wearing it around school regularly. Yeah, yeah every, every start, every start. Maybe we'll just give it to him. He'll wear it during the game. <laughs> during the game, yeah. Well, guys, we appreciate it. Thanks for for stopping on and uh, you know taking a look back at last year. Um, know that there's a lot to look forward to coming up here in 23, and then obviously moving on to your colleges. You've got you know, great programs, great schools that you're headed to, and uh, certainly wish you best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yep, Brandon Prince, Jason Schooley, Evan Brown, our guests this week uh, as we as we look back on 22 and get ready for an, an ex- the offseason and, and a great 23, and uh, we'll catch everybody out at the field.